How's it going guys? This is Scuba Chris. Today I'm going to show you how I avoid braid cuts when I'm plugging, casting, and spinning. You know, back in the day we all used mono. Basically, that's what we used. But nowadays I use either all braid or I use braid backing with mono. Reason for this is because braid has a thinner diameter than mono, so you can get more line on your spool. Plus another reason is you can cast farther because they like say if this was the thickness of 50 pound mono. Now, if I was to use a thinner line, like say my pinky now is the, the, the thickness of 50 pound braid, I can get more braid on the line and I can cast farther because the braid will have less air resistance. Now, this is the reason why most people prefer all braid over mono or braid with a mono top shot. All right, guys, for plugging and bait casting, um, here in Hawaii, we call bait casting dunking because we're throwing out a line and dunking the line. So how do you get rid of the chances of getting braid cuts with braid for dunking and bait casting? This is a good start. This is a breakaway cannon, usually sold in Europe, but I, I bought a bunch of these. I use it here in the U.S. And um, you can use this for casting heavy lines, with heavy baits, you know, heavy leads, and you can also use this for your plugs. Now, if you want to see what a close-up this looks like, right there. Now I've done, I think, several uh, videos showing this product, the Breakaway Cannon. Normally you're supposed to mount it on the bottom of your rod, like that. And what you do is you, when you get this on the bottom, you're gonna, let me see, get some line loose. Okay, what you do is you wrap, wrap your line around this. See this right here? Wrap it around it once, and I go twice, and that's it. Now, and then what's that gonna do is that when you, when you push this down, it will hold the line in, and when you release it, the line will come off, okay. And that's the, how the instructions read. But uh, a good friend of mine, Mark Gonzalez, said instead of putting it on the bottom like that, offset it to the side. So since I'm right-handed, it's going to go offset to the left-hand side. And uh, it, that creates a fast release. And what happens is it acts like, like extension of the index finger. So you can cast it farther. You're going to get more control. And you don't have to worry about cutting your finger. Okay, another way of casting your, your baits and your plugs is using thumb pads. Now, look up there. That's a thumb pad. Thumb pads are normally made from leather. Now, this is very common for archery users, but um, you can also use this for fishing. You would wet, this is usually leather, wet it first, and after you wet it, you, you, this will, when you tap your spool, it will put on the brakes. Now, back in the day, we used to use bicycle tube. We cut that, we used to use that. But the, the bicycle tube, uh, because it's rubber, will grip the line. This will just skim across it so you have better control. This way, you will not get any brake cuts. Okay, finally, casting gloves. Casting gloves is great, especially when you use heavier items like heavy lead, heavy plugs. But anytime you use a heavier object, your, your chances of getting the braid cutting into you is a lot higher. Also, if you're using thinner braid, thinner braid, your chances again are a lot higher because it will cut into you very easy. So it depends which process you're gonna use or which um, deterrent you're gonna pref uh, pick to save your fingers from getting chewed up. All right, next, the next one would be whipping, which is spin casting, but here we call it whipping. Now you can still use your breakaway cannon, but when it comes to whipping, I like to just use a basic Band-Aid in the joint of my finger. Or you can use what is known as a finger glove, 
Now, I have a couple of Kamagatsu finger gloves. Again, look at that. That's a Kamagatsu finger glove. I, I tried one, works pretty good. Um, I like it, but I prefer uh, just the feel of what I do. After, after you've been doing this for as long as I have, I never got a braid cut yet. That's what I prefer. Now, you can use a band-aid. That's the simplest thing, because where you're gonna get the braid cut, if you're right-handed, it's gonna be in your first notch right here. So just put a band-aid over that, that should work. Well, band-aids do work, but I've been doing this all my life. Never had a braid cut in plugging, dunking, or whipping. I never had a braid cut yet. Well, knock on wood, I haven't had one yet. But, you know, if you're beginning and you just have to be very careful. If you're using thicker braid, like maybe 65 pounds and heavier, the, 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 the thickness, thickness is thick enough where it's really not going to cut into you. Um, if you're using thin braid, like, you know, 10 to 20 pounds, yeah, that might cut into you. But I've been doing it for so long that I, I'm used to it and that has not happened yet. And the reason why it cuts here is because when you use a um, spinning wheel like this, see how the line is in, in that first notch? You're gonna hold it like this, and then when you cast it out, you're supposed to let go. Now, if you're doing it too fast or your timing is not correct, it's going, when you let go, the line's gonna run right in that joint and it's gonna cut right into you really, really bad. Now, the, the picture that's at the end here is from uh, one of the people in my, in my Facebook groups. It's, uh, it's from Mr. Sammy Boy Kalua, and that's what just happened to him today. And um, to answer his questions, I made this video, um, and he was nice enough to send me the picture of what happened to him. So hopefully these uh, points will help others not go to what he's going through because I heard those kind of cuts really stings. Okay, so how do I do it? Almost everybody, including me in the beginning, will put the line into the notch of your finger and draw it in like so. I stop doing that. What I do is I, from the, from the notch here, I go up toward the fingertip. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the line like that. See, it's going across the fattest part of my index finger. That way I have more sensitivity and direct control. So as soon as I throw it like that, look at that, it just comes off so easy, it's natural, it just comes off. And even if it doesn't come off, the, the line will just rub along that, it's not gonna cut in. That's what I do. That's why I've never got a break cut yet. Now with my luck, I'm probably gonna get one after this. But see, that's what I do. I don't make a notch, I do it this way. Hey, thanks again for watching my videos. It's kind of murder at, at, during these pandemic times, just sitting around at the house doing nothing all day. Oh, as a reminder, you know that bloody picture I showed? That's not from a uh, braid cut. That's actually me tying the, my fishing line to the hook and the wind blowing down my rod, yanking, yanking down the line, and it's a really sharp mustad hook went up through my finger and the, and the back end to my nail. There was a hospital about a mile and a half away. I could have walked there. I don't like hospitals. I don't like needles. So what did I do? I just got my pliers. I just bit down something and I pushed it all the way through. The pain was so great, I almost blacked out. But I was able to push it through, cut off the tip and take it back out and continue fishing again. Yeah, I'm not the sharpest pencil in the box, but that's how the bloody pitch occurred. But anyway, I just wanted to explain that because it wasn't from a break cut, all right? Thank you.